Hey, hope you enjoyed the service and thank you for once again tuning into This Is Us. As we do every week, we're going to be taking a closer look into all the amazing things people in our church have been getting up to and how they've been spreading the love of Jesus in their communities. This week, we're joining our kids' pastors, Alex and Rachel Blythe, and maybe Hippie G, behind the scenes of Hillsong Kids UK. Then we're going to pop over to Dover with Ralph and Rich to get a deeper understanding into how and why we started the Refugee Resettlement Program. We hope that these stories will inspire you and help you get connected into church life. So in the summer of 2015, in all news outlets, we started to see these horrific images of refugees fleeing mostly Syria, right? Uh, In boats, rafts, some dying in the seas, some making it over to other countries. And around the same time, we started seeing images of this camp in Calais, right? All these people stuck in France. We fast forward five years now, 2020, and we've got quite an extensive, I guess, uh, work that we're doing in church, refugee football, housing, but it didn't start like that. I'd love to hear from you, like, how did this all start? It kind of started really in the summer of 2015 for me personally, where I was to God, like, I I want to be involved, I need to do something about this. And um, five of us got together and um, kind of brainstormed, like, what what we could do. We didn't know the first thing about refugees, we didn't know where they would be in the UK. So we, um, we just decided to, to go to Calais the next day, and because that was the only place we knew were refugees. So that first time you and a small group of people drive over there after staff meeting, what was your experience like that first time in, in the camp? Yeah, so when we arrived to Calais for the first time, it was like, yeah, surreal, because you feel like you're, you're not in Europe, you're not in Western Europe or France or the UK, because it was a slum, basically. Makeshift huts uh, of plastic and some wood. It smelled, it was like human feces everywhere. There was no to- hardly any toilets. A few taps on the floor. Some of the team actually felt unsafe being there when we had the first visit. And it was just chaotic. And a cu- I mean, literally that way, a couple of miles away, yeah. you're walking into chaos. So how does that make you feel? It was heartbreaking and overwhelming, really. But I think, being there as a church, being there with like so many volunteers um, gave us an idea, like gave us a feeling or like, okay, we actually can do something. Something massive is happening at our doorstep, something uh, of, yeah, unpre- unprecedented skills happening. But at least we're here as a church and we were able to do something or li- play a little part. So we started sending out teams every other week. Um, of 40, 50 people, we collected thousands of items through church, like sleeping bags, clothes, yeah. shoes, yeah. anything that was helpful. So we, we would leave the warehouse, say at 4 a.m. in the morning, get the ferry across, um, picked up rubbish for six hours, go, went back to the London and um, yeah. Politically, no one wants to touch it, yeah. but you want to do something and the church can fill a gap. Yeah. And it starts off with the most simplest things, yeah. items of clothing, yeah. picking up rubbish. Yeah. And then that's taken us, those simple acts of service, yeah. doing what you could, yeah. has led us into many of the things we're doing yeah. now. Yeah. During lockdown and, and now, we still see people coming over in boats, what, like you said, like um, they've become basically more desperate, rather where they maybe tried to jump on a train or a truck before. Um, now one of them, few options they have is, is coming across in, in a boat, which is even more dangerous. Our hope is that we can d- support at least the family with each location uh, yeah. where, we, where we have a church. So we have three families at the moment, uh, in London, uh, Newcastle and in Woking. I guess this time of a lockdown has, has given us a chance to get ready and apply for more families. Uh, once the home office starts their flights again, the legal routes is open again. Um, so we've been applying with different locations across the, our church to um, support refugee families. So yeah, we, we want to be as ready as we can uh, once the borders open again, open again when the flights start again to um, uh, resettle refugees. 
So um, yeah, we're hoping, hoping to welcome many more families once, once that is possible. Randy, this week in the news we saw a family of five tragically pass away. They were escaping France, trying to find a new life in the UK. And now we're here in Dorking, this quaint English town that kind of feels a million miles away from what we saw. But tell us, what has Dorking got to do with the tragedy that we've just seen happening over the English Channel? Yeah, well, we get the amazing opportunity to resettle um, a refugee family here in Dorking. That's brilliant. So tell me, why are you involved with this project? So I had the opportunity to um, take the Woking family out to the beach for the day um, last summer and it was just incredible, um, especially knowing where they'd come from, to just spend the day with them down on the beach and just to see the kids just playing um, and be free and for the parents to just feel so free as well. I hooked in on a team night um, and you had mentioned that there was going to be the opportunity to, uh, to resettle a family here in Dorking and that is 10 minutes you know drive for me yeah. um, and that was all I needed really just the opportunity um, yeah the opportunity to give another family uh, a fresh start and now not only are you involved but you're actually the team leader uh, which is brilliant but what does that look like what are you doing what is the team doing how are we getting ready to resettle this refugee family so it went on a very, very steep learning curve because it's something that's organised by the Home Office. So it's a very, very, very structured um, programme that they're running. And um, so at the moment we have a huge application form to fill out which basically shows that we can support the family holistically uh, with everything from education to employment to um, learning to speak English, um, to benefits, to finance, you name it. We've got to cover everything the family are going to need. Um, so it's just been incredible actually because um, we've, we've put this out to local um, connect groups, yeah. to local groups and said anyone interested step forward. We've got an amazing team now of um, 15 people plus that have all come forward to volunteer. That's brilliant. So tell me, why are you involved? Our ultimate uh, goal is to do ourselves out of a job that we just totally help them integrate into life into the UK. If that was my family, um, and I was in that situation, then I would just want somebody to help me. There are tons of ways to get involved in what we're doing as a church to help refugees. To get more information and to find out how you can help, head to hillsong.co.uk forward slash refugee response. Kids Church is a huge part of what we do and we're dedicated to raising up new generations of people that are passionate about Jesus and his church. As lockdown hit and our entire church went online, this meant a new obstacle for the kids team. We join Alex and Rachel to explore how they innovated their online content to keep the kids engaged and connected, maybe even the adults as well. First thoughts when hearing we're doing HSK online. Fear and excitement. <laughs> It was, it was scary, it was daunting, it was exciting, something new, but also just, it was a challenge to think, right, we have to think creatively now of how to come up with stories, how to come up with new segments that are going to engage the variety of kids from one-year-old to 11-year-old. And, and we'd actually been dreaming of doing a kids' program, TV program, for years. Then we were kind of forced into it, which was like, okay, we can make this work. But then we had to create 30 weeks' worth of content. Now, plus... Yeah. Didn't see that coming. In the living room with a green screen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on our phones. Hippie G is the hip, cool, groovy granny. The character, I created it a couple of years ago. We were out in another venue and all the kids for the first week had to all be in the same space together. So it was like age one to 11. So we thought, what can we do? So I just created this character that could communicate to all kids so we could do like hip-hop dancing, rapping, tell a story for the young ones and that's where it developed. And, and kids have loved it and so it actually made a whole heap of sense to bring Hippie G to be a big part of the online service Yeah. because she was created to engage 1 to 11s. We've just got one kid service so it, yeah. it was great. Yeah, now she's, a lot of fun. Um, she's got her own YouTube channel. Her own YouTube. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> we are so blessed with such an incredible team. They've been making calls weekly to, to kids and families. They've been animators to graphic designers, putting some incredible screens together to, yeah, editors. 
it's been wild actually, team and how their commitment to growing church, doing Zoom calls um, each Sunday for the kids to engage with, like the commitment from team, we definitely couldn't do any of it without them. It's definitely shown us what we can do with something so small and reach so many children, kids that don't come to church, kids have got saved in their living room. Yeah. We had an awesome moment just the other the other week. So a parent was outside of a room and overheard their kid talking about HSK online, talking about the kids service, and then invited their friend who doesn't come to church to watch it the next week. So then the next week when it was allowed, they had a watch party at their house and then the mum or dad came along as well and then watched the adult service, which is epic. So yeah. church was growing, kids were engaging and actually they like it so much they want to share it with their friends. For us, we've had to rely on God in this season. Even at the beginning, we did live shows twice a week and for there was like this sort of month to six weeks where a lot of kids, um, no kids were at school or nursery or anything. And it gave kids, like parents said, it just gave them a bit of stability. They knew on Wednesdays and Fridays, they saw Rachel and Al doing sh silly things, cracking eggs on their head, da 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 da. And it just brought a bit of like, this is what we do at this time. Even though everything else is crazy, there's something there. And that was really special for us. And I feel like we got so close to the kids, even though we yeah. weren't with them, just hearing from their parents, FaceTiming kids. And even just having that element of fun. I think trying to bring fun when at the beginning it was really hard because kids all the time were just having to learn from home, parents having to become teachers while working. And so to have like these lives just meant that there was a bit of just fun and just yeah. silliness and they could just laugh together. Yeah, so it, it's been an adventure. We want his ministry to grow. We want to be able to engage more kids through this online context. It's actually opened up church for so many other kids. If you know or are part of a family and want to see your kids engaging with others, we're setting up Kids Sunday Zooms. To find out more and how you can get your child plugged in, email us at kids at hillsong.co.uk or message us on Instagram, which is all one word, Hillsong Kids UK. We hope you've enjoyed this week's stories and hope you have a blessed week. See you soon.